Yes, a lot of excitement surrounding the Pac-12 for this upcoming season, and we're pleased to be joined by a gentleman that's responsible for a lot of this excitement, the commissioner of the Pac-12 Conference, Larry Scott. And Commissioner Scott, now you have been a very busy busy man almost as busy as you were when you were a professional tennis player coming out of Harvard uh, expansion two new teams the incredible deal uh, signed with ESPN and us here at Fox uh, for 12 years of college football along with other sports and uh, there's some other budding things that are happening possibly a, a, a Pac-12 network can you give us an idea of where do you go from here after being so busy for in such a short amount of time well, we still have a lot of work to do to sort of make all this happen. We're only just starting with the Pac-12. We've got our first football championship game, which will be prime time on a Friday night on Fox that we're excited about. And, of course, launching a network and all that. So still a lot of work to do, but it's just so fun to be part of the conference right now with um, starting to get the attention, the national exposure, the respect that our coaches and our student athletes have felt they deserve for some time. It's, there's like this awakening going on uh, in the conference, and uh, it's really exciting to see the story being told nationally now. I'm joined by my partners, Coach Tim Brewster, coming over from the University of Minnesota, will be joining us as our sideline analyst, as well as my booth partner, Charles Davis. And gentlemen, I know that you have a number of questions for the commissioner. Well, Larry, first, I'd just like to say congratulations. You've been a busy man, as Gus said, and you've just done an amazing job of pulling together your vision. And that's the question that I have for you. You've done so much to this point. Uh, how has it all come together in your mind? And the steps that you need to take to continue the growth, the overall growth of the conference. Sure. Well, I think there's uh, been a lot of untapped potential in college sports. Um, and the key thing, I think, was that our presidents and chancellors, who are the board of our conference, um, wanted someone different and wanted a different strategy and agenda. And that's why they reached out to some. I don't come from college sports, I uh, come from professional sports, and I was a bit of a strange choice. <laughs> Probably, but uh, what I've tried to do as former student athlete myself is really sort of respect the collegiate model and what college athletics is all about, but try to apply some of the you know kind of cutting edge approaches that I, I know from professional sports and try to be very aggressive, frankly, about how we're marketing, branding, promoting the conference. And I think what this little journey we've been on has shown is there is a lot of untapped potential in college sports if things are done a little bit differently. I still think. There's a long way that can that we can go. I've talked about further consolidation and super conferences, which I think will happen. I mean, college sports is still so fragmented and doing things in a kind of antiquated way. Uh, but the passion runs so deep, the product's so good. I think college sports is going to have some great days ahead of it. Commissioner, as, as you continue to look at growing everything, Evolve with the Pac-12. Gus alluded to the fact you have a Pac-12 network that's coming online. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Because so many conferences have discussed it. Many of them have shelved the idea, at least for this time, and have decided not to do it. What made you decide to go forward with that? And at this time, it appears you don't have a quote-unquote equity partner. It's the Pac-12 doing it on its own. Yeah, that's our intention, to do it on our own. But we, we will need partners, obviously, to get distribution and production support and financial support. So how the structure actually nets out, I don't know. It's work in progress as we speak. Um, but the underlying uh, rationale for it was really about, about our fans and our student athletes. Um, I wanted to make sure that in addition to our premier events in football and men's basketball that are going to be on Fox, going to be on ESPN, that every one of our football and basketball games is going to be on TV and available to our fan base. You know, that's one of the greatest sources of frustration that I've heard from our fans is when they can't see their team play because it's blacked out or not available on a certain system. So that was one thing. Secondly, you know, what's one of the things that is a unique source of pride in the uh, Pac-12, and there's other conferences that are tremendous in Olympic sports as well, but is the prowess of our conference in, uh, in Olympic sports. Number of NCAA championships that we win, the number of student athletes that go on to be great Olympians, yet there's scant exposure for that. So I love the idea, like the Big Ten's done, of having our own media platform where we can get these great Olympic athletes exposed uh, for the national audience, but also their families and their friends and alumni from around the country. So it's really about finding a balance between all the attention around football and basketball with us wanting to showcase as well 
uh, all these great Olympic sports. And that's why it was an important priority. We, we think that's something that uh, we feel proud of and we want to showcase. So, you know, maybe we sacrifice some things to make that happen. But long term, we think it's really important for us. You know, quickly, we're going to get it back to my partners here. But you've done something. Last year, you took all of your football coaches and players to New York City, to Bristol, Connecticut, giving them extra exposure, getting them out there. You're going to do it again this year. Obviously, it was well received last year for you to go back and do it again. Are there other byproducts that you're seeing for the conference besides the fact that you're getting to that so-called Eastern market? Because we see, you know, everybody talking about that East Coast bias versus the Pac-12 because of times of games. But are you seeing more of a byproduct of just not just the football coaches being there, but the Pac-12 brand being out there? Certainly. You know, I, uh, being an East Coast guy myself, you know, when I, I came out here to the West Coast to take this role, I kept hearing about East Coast bias, East Coast bias, and I don't really buy into that. <laughs> I just felt that, you know, uh, we shouldn't complain about it. We should do something about it and go tell our story and uh, develop relationships and be available. Uh, kind of what I did in tennis beforehand with the stars that we had and the coaches and you know student athletes the stars of the show here so trying to do the same thing um, but yeah it's about telling the story and exposing people and making it easy sort of spoon feeding the East Coast media a little bit with the stories making it easy for them and the byproducts were not just the media kind of storylines but people being aware and paying attention to what's happening during the season and I think it probably signaled an intention that the Pac-12 is going to operate a little bit differently than how it had in the past so that, that's what I'd say was the benefit of it. Commissioner, you've done a wonderful job. Thank you very much for joining us today. It's a wonderful day. We got people here that are excited about this upcoming football season. We have the best player in college football in the Pac-12, and uh, we want to get one more answer from you. Who do you like to win it all in the conference this year? I'm going to put you on the spot. That's like, uh, which of my children do I like best? <laughs> I, I can't go there, but I'm thrilled to be working with you guys. This is going to be an exciting season in our history, and I love that you guys are going to be following our football this year. Well, thank you very much, Commissioner, for Coach Brew. Also, for Charles Davis, I'm Gus Johnson. Coming up next at the podium, Arizona. Commissioner, thank you for your time. Thank you. It was awesome. Great job. Thank you. Really so look forward much. to working look forward with you. Thank you guys very much. Appreciate it. Look forward to working with you too. It's gonna be fun. Yes, sir.